Welcome to the Ignite Podcast, the only healthcare marketing podcast that digs into the digital strategies and tactics that help you accelerate growth. Each week, Cardinals experts explore innovative ways to build your digital presence and attract more patients. Buckle up for another episode of Ignite. What's going on, everybody? We're going to have a blast today. I am Alex Marbrio, CEO of Cardinal Digital Marketing, focused on helping high-growth healthcare groups grow through performance marketing. Excited to be here. We've got Lauren Leone, our SVP of Client Services. Y'all are in for a treat. She's got the one with all the knowledge. She talks to all of our clients, helps onboard them, helps strategize with them, Shit, even helps manage quite a few of them. Don't ask for her. No, she's tapped out on account management, but she's got all of the knowledge you're going to need today. Lauren, welcome to Ignite. Hey, Alex. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I can't believe you still keep showing up here using your spare time with us. All right. Today, we're talking about how to create patient experiences that are memorable. And we're not going to do the usual ticky tacky stuff. We're going to talk about specific examples in our clients and otherwise that are really making it impactful. And then we're going to talk about different aspects of transformative patient experience. I want you all to use patient experience as a USP, unique selling proposition. If you make it so wonderful, that experience for every patient that comes to see you, wow, that can actually be your point of differentiation. How has the patient experience changed recently in healthcare? What's going on there, Lauren? Tee us up, and then we're going to get into specific tactical advice. Yeah, I mean, I think it used to be pretty linear, right? You used to have a patient pick up the phone, go to your website, call you, you know, come in for their in-person appointment, and then your standard follow-ups. But that has changed with the introduction of telemedicine and virtual channels and just all the ways that patients can now access healthcare. It's, you know, COVID kind of caused a change and that change is here to stay. So you really have to think about holistically, how do I interact with my patients online, offline, over the phone, uh, virtually when they're in in my um, office and everywhere in between. So it's it's just become a much more dynamic uh, relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not a it's not a linear experience anymore in that like you can predict, okay, they come through a provider referral and then we treat them this way and the liaison reset. No, it's very dynamic now, which makes it tough. Healthcare groups can no longer be uh, stoic and stay in the same lane. They have to evolve and they have to be become marketers themselves to make sure every touch point feels feels really good. What can healthcare groups learn from a few other industries? Like what have you seen uh, and any of your experiences in other industries that have just been so killer and you want to point out like, man, it'd be cool. If a group yeah. I mean, think about, you know, companies like Amazon, you, you got to think of the giants and, and then think, okay, how do I do that to my scale? But, you know, their use of video to tell stories or, you know, apps to keep their patients engaged and share information, even when you're not trying to get them, them to buy something from you right here, right now. There's just a lot of different ways that, that you can engage with them. And, and what you see, you know, I'm watching the Olympics right now, right? And what you see on all the commercials is storytelling. So it's not, here's my product, buy it. It's here's an impactful story of someone whose life was changed because of X, Y, and Z. And so you really need to just think about how how you speak to the patient on an emotional level, on a practical level. Um, there's more than just, you know, who's the closest to me and who's open right now. I'm going to go to them at this point. I love video as a, as a way to differentiate the practice. What are some of the core video aspects each practice needs to have in place to tell yeah i mean think about you know i don't know you and and i'm deciding if i want to come see you and and you're a provider so maybe i want to see your, i want to see a little bit about your bedside manner um I, I want to see how you interact i want to see your office is it clean is it modern is it somewhere that i'm going to come and enjoy you know i have to be there so spending my time while i'm there um, you know, just some things that you can show. You can show patient testimonials, outcomes, have people talk about their experience, how it changed their lives, their family members' lives. Um, or maybe it's just, you know, maybe it's not life-changing if you're in something simple like dentistry or urgent care, how convenient it was for a mom to bring her three kids in and get those appointments done every six months. And you just really took the pain out of what is typically, you know, sometimes a, a a very painful and and um, frictionful experience. So how do you just make their life easier? I love that. And there should be video 
for every step along, yes, you need them on the website to convince them to even reach out. You need the provider testimonials. You need patient testimonials. But then there's drop off once they set once they send in the lead form or set the appointment by calling in, even do the appointment uh, thing online. There's drop off there. So if you ever like a really advanced, like how do you reach them with like a sophisticated email nurture system? And you say, hey, as you're leading up to coming in, these are things you should know about your practice. What if you had a video walkthrough so that they can see people are masked up? It's safe. The whole thing, you know, like, yeah. gosh, every step along the way to make it like really impactful. Cool. They get me. They know I'm nervous. Okay. And then after you saw the doctor, like these are the things you could be thinking about to keep your back in check, you know, before your, before your surgery. I love video. I just yeah. love video. It's great. I mean, we're you you go on the Cardinal site and you see that we've got new videos popping up all the time. So uh, we're trying to we're trying to you know walk the walk. You know, I and everybody was talking about video a decade ago. Videos the next big thing, and all the SEOs were kind of crapping all over. Uh, now Google can't read it. All this stuff. It's not for SEO. It's not for traffic. It's not for that. It's about the user experience. About the patient experience. It's about convincing people you're the right fit and getting them to know your firm, your company, your practice without ever stepping foot into it. It can be a unique selling proposition. We got a full time videographer and staff. I believe in it so much. And I was just out visiting the largest orthodontic group in the country in Texas, and they're trying to figure out how to scale video across 200 locations. It's difficult. It's difficult. I don't know how the, I didn't have a great answer. I said, get corporate stuff, go to a couple of practices and then I don't know, use it that way. I don't think you can get video for 200 locations. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be this world-class studio production. You think about the iPhone now and you think about someone holding their phone in front of them and just telling their experience. And then, yeah, you got to have a video editor who understands how to put it together. But the footage itself, I think, is it's so accessible now with with smartphones. There's no reason every, every single one of us is a videographer. OK, yeah, absolutely. OK, now good patient experiences in healthcare. care. Teladoc life stand. Oh, my gosh. Best behavioral group in the country. What have you noticed any of our clients doing that's really unique? Yeah, I mean, the the video is number one. You know, when we started working with these clients, we said you absolutely have to figure out storytelling. You know, they're trying to take it to the next level by incorporating uh, influencers into their programs. How do they get those influencers to then interact with the patients to tell the stories and just kind of make you realize that this healthcare is accessible no matter who you are, where you live, what your background is. Um, so that's pretty cool. I've seen some healthcare groups too, there's other ways to engage with patients. I mean, there's all these health wearables now. There's ways that you can kind of tap into how people are doing at home. I've seen dental groups, you know, sending these like home cameras that you can use your phone to get a snapshot of your mouth before you go in. So we know what we're working with before you even walk in the door. There's just a lot of cool ways that, that you can um, use technology to engage with the patient in between appointments. Lauren, so talk to me a little bit about what's the most important thing. A lot of people think we got to do this and this to like increase awareness and stickiness. Sometimes it's not that. It's like kind of the antithesis. Where, where does your head first go to make a transformative patient experience? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I'm looking at when I'm engaging with a prospective new client is what what patients are you already attracting? Are you attracting the right patients? And are you actually converting those patients? So you're, you've probably done some work organically, paid search, whatever it is you're doing to get people to come to your site, call you, whatever it may be. But if, if there are still frictions there, if you're making it hard for the patient to land on your site and understand what hours you're open, when can I book an appointment? Why can't I get someone to answer this phone? Then you've, you know, don't go out and spend tens of thousands of more dollars on advertising, you need to solve those frictions first. Yes, some of those issues are operational, but if you don't have a well-staffed call center, calling should not be an option on your website. Maybe you need to utilize live chat or maybe you, you need to util utilize callbacks um, or some, si some sort of online booking system. So think about what frictions are your patients still experiencing? How do you reduce those? Maybe that's where your next dollar is invested before you then ramp up your marketing and advertising. I love that, Lauren. Too often as marketers, we're looking to do the next shiny object and we forget about the foundational elements. It's really fun to go do a video on Facebook ads and all that stuff. But if your call center is not properly intaking patients, if we're getting a lot of drop off after appointments are set, we don't need to do fancy stuff. We've got to analyze what's going wrong operationally. Please go fix that before we're doing anything crazy. I like it. Reducing friction, reducing friction. What educational pieces 
are they looking for in a patient experience along the way? What are they looking? What, what are they looking to know? And tell us the technical things to deploy to do that. Yeah, I mean, every patient who is new to a practice wants to know what to expect. It's all about expectation setting. So, you know, if, if you've got someone to book an appointment, you just captured their email, their phone number, whatever information they had to give you to get on your schedule, you can now put them into a campaign where you can send them, here's the guide for your first appointment, here's how long you're going to be here, here's where to park, here's, you know, when you walk into our waiting room, here's our COVID protocols, everything that they need to know, what to expect, what they're going to be asked to do, not to do, where, you know, where they need to be. Um, the expectation is set. They arrive. They already know what's coming. And they're going to walk away happier because it was exactly what you told them it was going to be. So that that's number one. I mean, have some sort of information for your patient on what it means to be a patient of your practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And make sure they know you got to show them what you're going to show them. And then you actually have to deliver on that. So if you're multi-location, every location needs to be held to, to, held to the same standard. And too often I see that some locations are not treated equally. Maybe, maybe they're not fully integrated into the practice. The doctors haven't fully bought in or they want to maintain branding. And the experience is very different. So make sure it's staying consistent. And in your communication, how should you come across as a provider these days? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's empathy for whatever situation the patient is in. I don't think that's ever changed. I think that's why doctors go to school. That's inherent to their nature. Um, but I think what's really changed the most is probably transparency. Um, you know, before it was just, this person is an expert. I trust every word they say. The patient is now empowered through the internet, through search engines, through all the information out there to really, understand, you know, what you're saying, whether what you're saying is the best information provided, can they get second opinion? So being transparent on how you operate and, you know, the information that you're giving them, whether it's a recommendation for a surgery or a procedure, why you made that recommendation, because they're going to go and look that up later and they're going to validate what you said or or they're going to find something contradictory and there goes your chance at having them as a patient. So Transparency, I think, has changed a lot with with where we are today in the digital world. Um, And then there's generally, and and again, this goes back to video, showing that you are relatable, that you are someone that they want to, you know, spend their hour with, that they're going to get good care by someone um, that they enjoy being with, quite frankly. Yeah, good bedside manner. You know what's interesting when we talk about the broader implication of not having a great patient experience is it's bad reviews. Obviously, you're going to get them on Google, Yelp, ZogDoc, uh, RateMDs, Vitals, all of those great those great websites. You're going to get bad reviews. But you know what I'm often seeing is that those are the reviews that are left from the negative Nancys. It's not about the provider care. It's always about the office management. The follow-up was bad. I was unclear on the payer partnerships that they had or insurances that they took. It took forever to get in. No one was wearing masks. It's always about the follow-ups, the treatment from the office staff, all that stuff. So you have to look at ways of making sure the patient experience is all the way through, not just the provider, not just the marketing of their website. What is your office team doing? What is the follow-up? There's good technology out there. Service cloud from healthcare, all the health cloud stuff, CRM, that can really make sure everybody's getting the same experience and it's a really good one. And please make sure your office teams are staffed up appropriately to handle the volume you're looking at. Can't tell you how many campaigns we've spun up for clients and then pause nine days later because we did our job of driving patient flow, but then they've, oh my gosh, we don't have enough office team to handle the inbound calls or we don't have enough providers. Staff up, staff up ahead of time. It's a lesson I'm learning at Cardinal too. All right, guys, in closing, give them one sentence to help tie this up, Lauren. What would you say in closing? I would just say, I mean, I think about the patient experience as the online and the offline and really making sure that they're both harmonious, not putting so much effort into your operations that you then have no marketing to, to support that and vice versa, um, that you, you focus so much on driving a new patient and then these patients have a, a poor experience. So really, um, you know, find the right balance both in where you spend your money and where you spend your time. I like it. I like it. Lauren, thanks for joining us on Ignite. Thanks for listening to this episode of Ignite. Interested in keeping up with the latest trends in healthcare marketing? Subscribe to our podcast and leave a rating and review. For more healthcare marketing tips, visit our blog at cardinaldigitalmarketing.com.